we are going live in five. Actually, his his sound is not clear. We are going live in five, four, three, one. Live. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome again to this webinar brought to you from the Orthopedic Research and Education Foundation, India, uh, with the relay being done through Auto TV. Uh, today, we again have the pleasure of uh, uh, Dr. UK Sadhu presenting uh, on uh, total hip replacements, a cemented uh, uh, sort of uh, prosthesis, uh, the theory and the practice and the advantages and disadvantages of uh, a cemented total hip replacement. Uh, as you all must be aware by now, Dr. UK Sadhu is uh, working as a consultant orthopedic surgeon. Uh, mainly uh, at the Pushpalata Singhania uh, Memorial Hospital in uh, Delhi. And uh, it's always a pleasure to hear from him. And uh, so without much ado, I'll hand it over to him to tell us about uh, the cemented total hip replacements. Uh, thank you, John. Um, good evening to everybody. And uh, the brief today that I have is... Uh, Cemented hip arthroplasty. Oh, how do I do that? Just I need to just a moment. Share your screen. Yeah. Green. Uh, there. Share. Yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, good. Maximum. So, is it okay now? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. So, once again, good evening. Um, today. Uh, the brief is uh, the cemented hip arthroplasty, <clears throat> the theory and the practice. What we are going to do is talk a little bit about how the cement works, the technique of uh, putting uh, the cup and the stem, and we'll try and uh, figure out why we should be using cement at all in this uh, day and age. Let's start with the basics. The cancellous bone is something like a honeycomb. It has uh, uh, a elastic deformation properties. That means up to a certain extent, if you push this, the, it can recoil back without breaking. So it is a little bit collapsible. It aids in weight transmission. But here we have like a honeycomb and our cancellous bone resembles this honeycomb. What it does is it helps us with the cement process. This is the crevice into which the cement would go without actually sticking to the bone. Now, this is very important to understand that cement is not a glue. It's, it's, it's just a filler. It's just a grout into which on one side, if you look at this, this is the bony cortex. On the inside, would have you would have the cancellous bone into which the semi-liquid or semi-solid cement goes and interdigitates into this. This is how it gets the interdigitation, the stability, and the anchoring. But that does not mean the cement actually sticks to the surface of the cancellous bone. It is because of the honeycomb, it just invaginates and makes these micro locks. But if somehow we were to separate these two uh, 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 surfaces, the cement on one side, the cancellous bone with the cortical bone on other side, it will separate. So there is no... There is, so, uh, the, the cement wouldn't stick to uh, the cancellous bone. This is the great strength of this uh, uh, concept. So that means if we were to somehow compress the cement, it will go into every available nook and cranny, thereby giving us tremendous hold, thereby the distribution of weight. Okay. 
but it would fail in shear just like any uh, any any uh, elastic deformation getting out of hand would fail it will fail in shear but it gains strength in simple compression now this is an electronic microscope picture of the composite here is the metal here is the polymer the cement and this is the fibroblast any gap between the metal and the cement would be filled by fibroblast that is so long as there is a intimate contact with the bone on one side and the prosthesis on the other side we should have a damn good uh, working uh, composite here so let's start let's start with the femur first now this is something that is undesirable while reaming or preparing or uh, rasping we must not bear the bone down to the cortical bone because what we have done is taken most of the good cancellous bone away from the bone into mm -hmm. which our cement is going to uh, interdigitate so even the rasp is made in such a way look at the look at these sharp teeth angling down so once the rasp goes these modern rasps of rasp which goes inside the stem while preparing a bed it actually compacts the bone without actually taking any of this precious bone out this rasp is essentially to prepare a bed for the cement into which the stem polished or otherwise would go so the philosophies of the cement and uncemented uh, hips are totally different in uncemented concept you have this cortical bone and you have intimate contact as much as possible which is more or less a point contact inside the canal with the cortex you have certain surfaces left for the so called in growth or on growth but essentially the stability depends on these point contacts on the other hand in the cement what you have is you have this cortex followed by the cancellous bone into which you have a blob of cement which has already got micro lock hold onto this side and you simply plop the cement the difference is this in uncemented if you look at the lateral view of the femur you have the so called three point contact three point fixation of the femur that means the stem of the uncemented hip has a mind of its own do not look at the ap only it is the lateral that is crucial because once you advance that rasp for seating of the uncemented stem it has at best a three point contact that means the stem will take a root which is carved out by the rasp which in turn is dictated by the shape of the femur that is we are trying to 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 uh, adapt the shape of the femur to the prosthesis not the other way down whereas in the cement it's the other way down so here you have very limited control over version what happens is that whatever little version this rasp and the final stem allows you you have to adjust the all the version or the so called combined version in the cup itself that is why in uncemented it is much more logical to put the stem first instead of putting a cup first because then you have lost the option of manipulation now not all of the femur can take uncemented stem remember you have to fill and you have to have some kind of those that three point contact now it is so it is okay if it is a type of type a dot type that is it's a thick cortices and uh, the uh, the rasp and the stem would have some kind of fold but as we progress from b to c 
you see the problem and this is the reason an uncemented hip in an elderly or osteoporotic bone is much more liable to cause a stem fracture. So, what does longevity of the cement depend on? It essentially depends on the dry cancellous bed, a prepared dry cancellous bed with nothing intervening between the cement and the cancellous bone. It needs pressurization because that, that grout, that semi-liquid uh, cement has to interdigitate into these crevices, the so-called honeycomb, so that it has a it has an uh, enhanced surface area for distribution of the stresses. And you have to have an adequate cement mantle, at least two, preferably three millimeter all round, into which you can manipulate the uh, version according to your requirement. This is the beauty of a cemented stem. You are not uh, beholden or a slave to the, uns the uncemented rasp-like conditions. What is the importance of pressurizing of the cement? Look at, look at this picture on the left side. This is a digital compression of the cement with no distal bone block. And look at the cement. What well, It might look okay on the surface, but it has barely uh, gone be passed in adequate quantities beyond the uh, proximal half of the stem. Whereas on this side with the distal block and the proximal pressure, you see the uniformity of the cement all around a uniform mantle into which a stem is put. That means a lot more of a surface area is available for dissipation of the forces of locomotion. So what happens on the femur? Here you have this view, end-on view of a femur being prepared. The head has been taken away. This is the elliptical bare neck that is looking at you. The stem is somewhere on that side. The foot, the knee is on that side. So you start with the, with the bone all to establish the medullary canal. Look how far laterally we start. Do not start here. The modern stems, whether cemented or unstems, are, are straight line configuration. They are not curved. So you start from the so-called peri periformis fossa. Leave this alone. This is a precious cancellous bone. So from there, you see how the medial part of the bone, the cancellous filler in the neck is still intact despite a huge hole in the piriformis area. And by the time we are through with rasping, the rasp itself has compacted the cancellous bone, preserved a very good bed for uh, the cement, uh, receive, uh, uh, receiving the cement. And from there, because we want no interposition of anything, blood clot, or any fibrous tissue between the cement and the cancellous bone, we thoroughly clean it, wash it, peroxide, dry it, and you have this literally bare bone look of a femur ready to receive the, the, uh, the cement. So uh, many years ago, the study was done when the canal block was had just come into vogue. And here you see a graph being plotted. This is the survival uh, uh, percentage, and this is uh, for the time interval. And you see how the bone block stays near 99 percentile after many years, whereas the one without the cement block, the digital so-called first generation cementing technique, the revision rates are a lot more because there is a loosening in, in time. So the ideal method would be to vacuum mix it, uh, then pour it into a syringe by some mechanical or some pressure, you push the cement through the nozzle into the stem. 
into the into the femoral canal which already has a distal block so you have a distal block which prevents the cement from flowing all the way down to the neck now you have blocked this and you are putting this pressure rise the cement under pressure from proximal end then you start pressurizing once you have put adequate amount of cement there there are ways and means of pressurizing this cement even more and this vent the suction catheter it takes all the collected blood that oozes out from distally takes it out it also sucks the semi liquid cement right down to the end so once you have this uh, cement blob there into this you put a thumb there and start putting that straight stem down the canal blocking the escape of the cement from the medial side so we'll see we'll go over all this in the video also and the original charles had uh, a little bit of a rough surface so what happened is that the cement with the rough surface and cement on this side with the cancellous bone it produced a composite which 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 term which is termed as composite beam on the other hand the philosophy of highly polished stems like exeter stem is that while the cement is interdigitated through the cancellous bone which in turn is transmitting the weight to the cortex this smooth stem it just slips in remember it is not actually glued to the cement at all that means if there is you put a centralizer here and put the block about a centimeter beyond here this stem once there is a weight bearing and over a period of time it has a space to subside what is called a controlled subsidence so polished surface non bonded implant cement surface there is a taper slip it is a it's a triangular taper slip and it is double tapered a anterior posterior and medial lateral that means there is a a stop cock effect the more this subsides the more air tight this composite becomes yet if you need to take the stem out for any reason from this uh, the the bone and cement complex all you need to do is clear the shoulder and yank it out just hammer it out it comes out pristine you don't have to debond the stem from the cement okay so 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 much for the uh, stem now for the cup the establum side as in femur same way in the in the uh, cup what you need to do is you have to prepare why because whether it is a uncemented cup or a cemented cup both are hemispherical and they are ideally put at around 40 degrees of inclination 40 to 45 and about 20 degrees of uh, version depending on the uh, requirement but our native establum if you look at the bare bone pelvis it has an inclination of 55 to 60 degrees so if you try to match either cup with this it will be a very vertical cup not desirable and our native antiversion is about 15 degrees or so and it is a shallow it is not a hemisphere into into this oblong we cannot put a uh, hemisphere without it jutting out uncomfortably so there is a disparity which we 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 uh, get round by so called preparation of the bed and what we do is first of all we medialize that is we go straight medial that is the first step depending on how much of the medial wall is left you deepen the step the establum as uh, and then you start expanding the expanding is limited by the anteroposterior diameter of the 
acetabulum, the native acetabulum. Th these two points are fundamental in putting the cup. That is, you medialize safely and next you expand to take as big uh, safely as safely possible the cup which has to be limited by the anteroposterior dimensions of the acetabulum and the seating is at the so-called teardrop now i'm sure you know the teardrop but it wouldn't hurt to go through the landmarks which are vital to understanding uh, how to seat the cup in the in the in the acetabulum because this is generally the achilles heel so here we have a, a pelvis x-ray and this line this is the posterior column okay the medial wall as it were this is the teardrop here that is the teardrop now this is the end of the femoral head so the distance between the femoral head the bony part and the lateral part of the not the medial the lateral part of the teardrop is the safe amount of medialization you can do if you touch or go beyond this beyond this wall the so called kohler's line or ischial line you are already inside the acetabulum do not be fooled by the superior pubic ramus. If you, if you cross this line, you're already inside the pelvis. So next, for seating of the, how, how much, because you would have already templated, but a, a rough trick is, uh, to drop a perpendicular at uh, uh, stem seating or the rasp seating, the trial stem, and drop a kind of perpendicular to the trial head, it generally falls in the center of the head. This is a very quick reference uh, trick, apart from a very accurate measurement guide. Okay, so I'll go over an example. Now, these are two examples. This is an osteoarthritic hip. Okay, here is our teardrop. And on this side, we have a rheumatoid-like picture. Now, there is the teardrop. Our head is already into the pelvis. Now, you would not dream of medializing this, okay? Our head is already inside the pelvis. So, this is the safe area, the safe distance you can medialize up to. At any time you have any doubt, take a 2 mm uh, wire or a 2.5 mm drill and drill and you can measure the depth of the safe amount of the middle wall that is still left. Okay, the other very important uh, landmark is this transverse acetabular ligament. If you are were to see the lower part of the cup parallel and inside this, the cup would be neutral. That is, it will attain the native acetabulum antiversion. You don't have to put it anymore unless you intentionally want a cup which is seated inside the, just inside the uh, tal, that is transverse acetabular ligament, is, is, has already got the native acetabulum's antiversion. It also super completes the acetabulum, which is so much more important in cemented hip because it stops the cement from escaping inferior. It is not of so much importance in, in uncemented, but the seating part still remains important, even whether it is uncemented or cemented. So friends, again, we come to the pressurization. Now that's a bit uh, trickier part than the stem where you put the uh, block on one side and start pushing on the other. Here, you have a hemisphere, hemispherical bed and you have put these uh, anchoring holes. Now, if you put a cup there, the cement starts escaping from sides. Doesn't matter how, how clever you are, you cannot, you cannot control the escape from all sides. So you need a bone dry bed and you have these anchoring holes because those uh, act kind of a, uh, uh, cement screws which prevent the 
micro movement of the uh, head in torsion. So, when cementing the cup, you start at the teardrop, seed the lower part of the, uh, the thing at the teardrop, okay? Then stop the escape because this is already stopped here. Stop the escape of the cement while you take this up into required uh, vertical, verticality, that is 40 to 45 degrees. The other is you start pushing from this side. So stop the cement from escaping and start pushing. Keep as much as of a uniform metal as possible. This device, which is a rim fit silicon disc, it fits the periphery of the stem without letting any cement escape. And once you have seated the cup, you can this kind of before, sorry, this, this is actually before the uh, before putting the cup. Uh, the, the silicon uh, disc stops the escape and it pushes that cement into that vital crevices, the honeycomb of the establishment. So essentially you have this picture with the, once you have taken that rim fit uh, silicon disc out into which you put the cup and you see a uniform two to three mm without any distinction between the cancellous uh, bed and the, the, the bone, any lucency, is a is 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 a visible on this so this is that uh, so called mexican hat or the rim which can be cut to size to fit the native establum according to there is a template and you can cut it to size and it stops the cement escaping when you are pushing the cup in immediately now if you were to push cup without either the rim and, or anything else in between it will bottom out. To stop that bottoming out, you put these pods, PMMA pods, on the on the surface of the cup, which will ensure that a certain amount of the cement is uh, still uh, remaining after your pushing. Now we'll go over some examples. We we'll start with the simple ones: the osteoarthritic hip, tons of space medially, hip medialized cemented stem and the cup and the osteophytes, especially the inferior, watch out for this monster. You have to excise this uh, before you come out. It also distorts the anatomy, so that's part of the exercise. Now, here you have a kind of reverse situation. This is a fracture estabulum, four month old fracture estabulum and posterior column is gone. So at that, time it's virtually impossible to get this thing back so excise the head use part of the head bear it i i i, I use an adequate kind of disc uh, as a block as a as a as a cork from uh, the rest of the graft of the cement slipping into the uh, pelvis and over which i put that cancellous mush do a reverse reaming so you have a nice cancellous bed prepared and this is the particular patient after stabilization of the posterior column in c2 uh, this is him at uh, and cemented uh, uh, cup 18 months and 11 years he uh, died with this native uh, 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 with, a, with a single surgery on the the implant outlasted the patient this is a little more tricky. This is a courtesy uh, Professor Crawford from Brisbane. Here you see the massive osteolysis, the proximalization and the medialization of the cup, the great lucency. But those people are very good with the, with the so-called impaction grafting. And you see the cup has been put back into its uh, required position, not high hip center. The bed has been prepared with impaction grafting and the poly uh, cup has been cemented into this, the newly minted establum bed. So what we have here is another advantage of the, uh, the so-called cemented technique. We take advantage of the non-bonded surface of the uh, cement with the stem 
and the bonding of the cement with the cortic with the with the cancellous bond. Here you see the stem is more or less okay. It is the cup that is the um, the the trouble here. The cup is rotated and there is lucency. So impaction grafting. Here you have a. Uh, 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 uncemented uh, uh, cup, but we we knocked the uh, the stem out. It showed lucency, and it was loose on table. So we knocked it out, and simply put a, a smooth uh, stem into the same mantle with a little more uh, liquid cement poured into the same canal, and we we kind of escaped with this trick. And it is it, it has uh, a certain proven record and it works. There are many studies uh, extolling the virtues of this. Now here you see a, a failed implant with the varus or the angulation at the stem. Uh, normally it would take an osteotomy to negotiate this. But as I said, there is a cement mantle into which it is forgiving, it is accommodating. You don't need the osteotomy. A straight stem into the cement metal has been cemented, the cup also. So, what are the downsides of uh, uh, cemented? And uh, one downside of the uncemented, uh, this is very brief. Definitely, the cement takes a longer time and there is a learning curve. The bone cement implantation syndrome, BCIS, Sometimes, in some cases, fortunately very rare, you have hypoxia, hypotension, arrhythmia when you are trying to pressurize. Even though it can occur at any time, but generally it occurs around the cement pressurization. How to, how to kind of be prepared for it or hopefully bypass it? Maintain a good volume of the one the anesthetist beforehand, a good fluid volume and high oxygen. And do not uh, pressurize when the monomer is quite in the liquid phase. That is, there is a certain time before which you should not be pressurizing the cement. In the uncemented, as I have already alluded to, you have a shaft fracture at the insertion um, time because of the much more rigidity and much more unforgiving uh, uh, implant nature. So, just a very brief uh, uh, point about the worldwide trend. America is overwhelmingly uncemented. Europe and UK are more cemented, but uncemented is slowly on the rise there also, at least in some parts or at least on the cup side. On India, it's anybody's guess, but probably it is the uncemented which is a lot more than the uh, cemented. There are many studies which you can uh, uh, come across, uh, which uh, you know sing uh, uh, praises of one or another. But I think I don't think there is a contest here. But still, it is inevitable. And this is one study in uh, Annals of Joint in uh, 2017. Five registries. Overall, cemented is better. Cemented survival better in old. Cement less in young. And Periprosthetic fracture are more in cementless. This is another meta analysis survival of cemented versus uncemented versus hybrid. World Journal of uh, Orthopedics 2017. And uh, they did Medline, Senal, Cochrane Review, 27 studies, five clinical trials, nine cohorts, 13 registries. And here we have the uh, um, nugget cement did THR is superior, superior despite the study limitation. So I don't think there is one superior over another. They have their uses. The only thing is cement seems to be going out of fashion, which is somewhat of a pity. So take home message. By the way, this is not the end. There will be a small video which will highlight whatever I have said. Uh, it will be re-emphasizing those points and it will be much more graphic. But essentially the take-home message would be cement has, cemented hip has a long proven track record, especially on the stem side, it is unbeatable. 
it is versatile there's no question it takes longer but the question is does it actually long uh, last longer than the unsubmitted maybe maybe not i don't know but what what i lament is it is slowly becoming a lost art i gather that uh, the many or most of the modern generation of at least uh, american uh, orthopedic surgeons uh, cannot handle cement in uh, hip uh, in hip so the video uh, will uh, follow and it again is courtesy uh, the queens medical center and professor crawford from brisbane so uh, i will uh, uh, uh yeah i got it and play uh it's a 5 minutes uh, uh, video and uh, uh, i will do the running commentary here so this is the femoral uh, preparation and you see thorough washing and almost uh, bone dry bone bed the back into the medullary canal while the nurse is mixing the cement this is the vent that has gone right up to the bone block which has been put so that there is a uh, vacuum created it doesn't allow that block doesn't allow the cement to escape down to the knee once you are prepared so around 2 minutes you put pour that cement and this is the proximal pressurizer so it has this rhomboid sort of uh, seal which has a metal plate and this rod has a pusher which with all might of his uh, body the surgeon is pushing and you can see this despite a good seal the cement is still escaping what is more important is to see this to see this the medullary contents escaping from the neck such as the pressurization that the the marrow is escaping from the bone this is the stem this is the neck medial part and look at the stance of that surgeon who is pressurizing with all his might with his body and he does it while playing with the uh, cement to see uh, while the cement is set so at 6 minutes or so from the uh, from the starting of the uh, pressurization once the once the implant is prepared so you stop the escape from the medial side start pushing this straight stem polished highly polished stem and this holder gives you a choice of putting the adequate or the required antiversion and he has not still given up he is still pushing with a, a u sort of seal around it and he is still pushing it and once he is happy there is this uniform mantle the marrow canal contents are no longer escaping and there you have this uh, uh, a video which illustrates what i have uh, already uh, demonstrated okay so i think that's the end of the uh, message great Th uh, thank you very much dr sadhu as usual uh, It's been very uh, informative as well as simplified to the extent that everyone who is listening to it should be able to understand it very clearly. And, uh, we'll open the house to questions, and I hope there are enough questions because it's important to get your doubts cleared at this stage.
thank you so much sir. Uh, so yeah waiting for question you can stop uh, sharing your screen uh, dr sadu stop share okay yeah okay great and uh, expand this can i hear no no you don't need yeah. to so yeah uh, yes on your side is fine this side okay are good now yeah uh, thanks so much sir so uh, just uh, one question about uh, as uh, it is in traditional teaching that for younger patient uh, usually we prefer cementless thr and the one reason what uh, we have doubt is that the revision for the revision surgery also we found it is a little difficult for the revision surgery for removal in case of cementless stem so your view on that sorry did i understand it is uh, less difficult to do a revision in cement less stem uncemented no, stem no it is not That's anyone what, who has uh, done a, a removal of the uncemented stem will watch how difficult it is now yeah. this was my point that if you uh, do this pressurization the bonding between the cement through the cancellous cone into the cortex is ready made for you there is a bed and fortunately for you if the stem is a highly polished you just simply knock it out just clear the shoulder that's important because some of overhang will not let it come out now in into that cement mantle which is already there what you take is especially in i don't want to name the company uh, many of the companies or at least one i know of has a various sizes uh, which is which are the pedatic or the cdh uh, stem which is a lot uh, thinner or sh- shorter than this so all you do is pour a liquid cement down and put this cement it, it literally takes a few minutes secondly those people they have done a, a electron microscope pick study of this layer of the newly poured cement with the old cement and under the electron microscope there was no difference it bonded with the old cement so there is no sort of new surface you are creating whereas for yourself you have made life so simple for yourself uh, does that answer your question is that was that the question yeah i think it what is uh, uh, now clear is that especially with the cement in cement revisions the revision of the cemented stem especially the highly highly polished stem is actually easier than an uncemented taking out an uncemented stem which is not loose can really be a challenge Uh, you end up breaking the femur there are a whole lot of problems that you can get into so actually and what happens is even if so especially when you're doing revisions after many years very often the model that was there at that time is no longer available in terms of fitting the head in yes so you end up having to remove the stem and struggling to remove the stem in these uncemented hips okay i've had we've had this problem recently where someone had done an uncemented hip and we couldn't find a head that fitted that although the stem looked okay so we were forced to remove the stem and then do another uh, revision stem on that and so, so for the younger patient uh, is it okay to do a cemented stem that is okay sir? yes let me be quite clear cemented is as much applicable in young as an old uh, there is a proven track record as i have already shown in couple of studies the cement side is no problem there used to be some misgivings on the acetabulum side but if you do this pressurization with the rim fit that is do not let the cement escape after the principle is the same but even if you give credence to the many studies which uh, say uncemented Uh, stem uncemented cup is better in long terms i have no quarrel with that maybe and so this becomes a hybrid that somehow seems to be in vogue again a hybrid hip some of the studies are saying a hybrid probably is better than but these things will keep on evolving as we go but to answer your question i don't think just because a person is young uh, this, uh, this it should be withheld this the cement should be withheld 
from him, especially on the female side. The establishment is the tricky bit. Yeah, I think I would agree entirely because we still tend to put, put most of our stems uh, cemented. Unfortunately, today we have patients who, uh, because of their sort of uh, interest in uh, looking into Google and the net, etc., sometimes come saying that they want an uncemented stem. So uh, I used to argue with them. I have given up. Exactly. Customer so is the king. Okay, so be it. So we would still use an uncemented stem in younger patients. Uh, but cemented stem is still, I feel, the best even in the younger patients. It is the the, the freedom of putting that... Uh, uh, exactly. Positioning your top and position. stem where you want it. Yes. And remember, at some stage it needs a revision. So you need to have some bridge. You, 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 you want a escape hatch also. Yeah. So the only problem with cemented is in some of the infected revisions where you have to take out all the cement. That can be a big challenge. It, it, it is, but I think with the modern techniques of the extended, the ETO, the extended trochanteric exactly. Once ETO. you do an ETO, then it becomes... Yeah, then, I mean, I, I think you should have a very short uh, fuse for that. You should really have very, uh, you know, you should be doing it more than not doing it. It is, it is, just give yourself a certain time limit. If you can uh, affect it, the removal of the cement. It all comes out easily, that's different. Yes, otherwise, yes. But otherwise you'll cause more damage. Sometimes the cement just comes out and there's infected yes. one, the cement comes out long, I mean, literally yes. it's loose and there's no bonding, yes. so it comes out. But sometimes it can be quite a challenge, especially the distal plug can sometimes be quite a problem to take out. If it is not infected, I just mm -hmm. kind of uh, drill through it. Yeah. So, so yes. uh, for, for the next question, as you have mentioned, that, uh, so you prefer cementless stem in case of infected revision and even it oh. was done. Why? Is it? Why do you uh, say that? No, no, sir. Uh, my question is when to prefer cementless stem in case of revision surgery? What is your take? I would say um, I, I will 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 ask uh, Dr. Mukhopadhyay's opinion also. But once you have done a, uh, something like an ETO, then, yes. then you have no choice because then the the uh, hold that stem will have is uh, distally. So you need distal hold something like a Wagner uh, type of stem, which will bypass the proximal uh, hold completely. So. In those situations, yes. Uh, John, you have any thoughts on Yeah, that? absolutely. I agree with you. And uh, uh, But the thing is, in, in an infected revision, you want to put in cement for the antibiotics. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's a tough decision. Of course, once you do an ETO, then you are pushed into using an uncemented stem. So if you don't have to do an ETO, I would still use the cemented stem for my infected revisions. So that's one more advantage that Dr. Yeah. Mukhopadhyay has said that the, it, the antibiotic uh, can uh, leach over a long period of time controlling the local infection. Uh, uh, one more thing. Questions in the chat, is there? Yeah. Uh, someone's asking if there's a difference in reaming between cemented and uncemented procedures. I think part of that was covered, but I'll let Dr. Sadhu answer that. The difference between reaming in a cemented and uncemented. Essentially, uh, in uh, cemented, you prepare the bed without taking uh, with, ta with taking very little of the uh, cancellous bone out as, as much as possible. Whereas, with an uncemented, you need the primary stability which will be achieved by uh, the rasp will let you know, okay, now we have it. So you have to keep on rasping till you get a certain stability. That unfortunately will take some of the, uh, some of the bone away, but still adequate cancerous bone must be left because it is the ingrowth or the ongrowth onto the surface of the uncemented stem is from the, the remnant of the cancerous bone. The cortical bone does not 
uh, grow onto the uh, artificial uh, stem. So, uh, one doubt is uh, in case of post operative period, uh, if compared with cemented stem, uh, is it the bed bearing is allowed or uh, how it is? it should be advised sir, for cementless stem and for cemented? Unless there is some uh, misfortune, uh, my cemented and uncemented uh, hips have to stand up and uh, get up and walk on the first post-operative day. They start with toe touch. Depending on their comfort, they can put, cemented can put partial weight uh, to full weight, especially the elderly. It is, it is cruel to let an elderly person do so-called non-weight bearing. Uh, it is much kinder to do at least to toe touch to partial weight bearing in elderly. doesn't matter what implant you have used. It much less effort is spent. They are much more stable. So to answer your question, both get up, stand up, walk, start walking with at least a toe touch. With uncemented uh, uh, prosthesis, I'll gradually ask them to uh, increase the uh, graduate from the walker to the to the stick, but they have to start uh, mobilizing from day one and toe touch everybody is allowed. Uh, partial to full weight and cemented and gradually increasing weight as comfortable uh, to the patient in uncemented stem. You achieve primary stability on table. Great. Thanks. I think thank you very much, Dr. Sadhu. It's already 7.50. This, I think, the longest talk I've heard from you. <laughs> it's, it, uh, it's my passion. So yeah, it, it, was, my passion. It, was, it was really good. And we, I think we all enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sure everyone's benefited from it. So thank you very much. And, thank uh, you, Dr. Mukhopadhyay and Dr. Janki. Thanks for uh, um, asking me to present. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, thank bye, you. everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. It okay. Bye bye. Uh, what do I do next? Sir, uh, uh, I'll ask the topics from you. <laughs> Achha, abhi yes. Can I talk? Haan, still yes, live? Sir, it's, it's still live, I think. Uh, Can we stop? Yeah, Rishi. Yeah. Rishi. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, sir. All right. Are are we okay to talk now? Uh, I think it is. Make fun of us, Rishi. He's uh, from Ortho TV, sir. Is because I see some people still. Yeah. No. I think I'll yeah I'll call you, sir. Okay. Because. It's so, like, so can I can I uh, do leave here leave here and then we can talk on phone later? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yes. So thank you, Dr. Janki. Thank I'll, you so much. I'll leave, take leave of you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thanks.